my name is Pavel. I will say a few words about the checkpoint restore stuff we've done at Parallels. So uh, the whole idea about checkpoint restore uh, and uh, first implementation at Parallels appeared with the OpenVZ project. Uh, OpenVZ project is about providing containers on Linux for users, and one of the features of that uh, was a containers live migration feature with which we moved containers without stopping them uh, between two nodes. Uh, and since uh, one of the goals of OpenZ project was to provide containers functionality upstream, uh, someday we decided to start with upstreaming the checkpoint restore. Uh, and uh, the first attempt, uh, which was done not only by us, was, uh, was on the kernel side. So we tried to come up with a uh, a set of kernel patches provided checkpoint restore API uh, for the user space to dump full state of process, uh, pull it out of the kernel, save it somehow on disk, and then uh, restore process out of the information. Uh, this approach was not accepted by the kernel community due to big complexity and intrusiveness uh, into the kernel. So uh, we decided to do it on the user space side, and so far we seem to uh, be quite successful with that. Uh, the latest release we have is 0 0.7. It supports x86 64 bits. It supports ARM, both 32 and 64 bits. Uh, and it can save state and restore state of pretty much everything <coughs> typical applications use. Memory files, uh, Unix circuits, UDP circuits. We also can live migrate established TCP connections. Uh, and of course, containers, since it's our primary interest in that. Uh, the nicest thing about this all is that uh, version 0 0.7 uh, works uh, over unmodified Linux 3.11. All you need is just uh, turn some configuration knobs on, uh, and you'll have all Creo can, uh, including live migration and similar stuff. Uh, we do testing internally. We have a huge set of atomic tests which uh, check that uh, all the kernel APIs are supported, but from time to time we take some real uh, real life uh, software and check how CRI works with them. Uh, so far we have checked quite a lot of things uh, like various services, in, for example Apache, MySQL, uh, system, system services, uh, compilers, Java, uh, lots of stuff with VNC and command line tools. How much kernel code have you gotten rid of that you used to carry around in your private patches? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we basically one third, but that's code that was never in the kernel that was in our private patches. So, yeah. What's sorry? How much of the code did we get rid of by doing it in user space instead of kernel space? So if you compare it to the OpenVZ kernel code, which originally had kernel level checkpoint restore, it's about the, pat the, the total size of the OpenVZ patch for, I think, 2632 is about uh, just somewhere short of 100,000 lines. 33,000 of those lines are roughly in kernel checkpoint restore that we just threw away. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, at Parallels, we've basically started with uh, only two usage scenarios for checkpoint restore. They were live migration and uh, kernel upgrades without reboot. Uh, live migration is used and can be used by anybody else for, for example, load balancing in a cluster, for power saving, for power saving, for pulling nodes out for maintenance and similar stuff. Uh, but while the project was growing, uh, people came up to us with uh, various other scenarios. For example, uh, some guys already use Creo to speed up starting of uh, Java stuff. It uh, starts slowly, but restores from images uh, up to 100 times faster. 
Uh, HPC people are very interested in uh, periodic snapshots, so in case they perform uh, some computation that lasts, I don't know, several days and they have a power outage on, the, on Sunday, they don't have to recompute the whole stuff from scratch. Uh, we've seen scenarios for uh, enhancing debugging and testing uh, and uh, a lot more. Uh, an API for Creo is uh, twofold. Uh, from the very beginning, Creo was a command line tool, uh, which included uh, and now includes several top level uh, actions, uh, dump and restore uh, basic stuff for getting state and restore from it. From it. The pre dump and page servers are two commands that can speed live migration up. Uh, when uh, you're doing live migration, what you want is to uh, copy the whole state from one machine to another. Uh, but uh, in order to have this state uh, consistent, uh, you have to keep the tasks uh, frozen while doing this transfer. Uh, if the amount of memory applications used is huge, it, could, it can last minutes, which is uh, not acceptable in most situations. So with uh, page server and pre-dump, we can uh, fetch some memory in advance on another machine uh, without stopping tasks, then stop them, check with what has changed, and uh, transfer a significantly smaller amount of data uh, to keep up with the changes. Uh, we have a service command for RPC, uh, the next thing, and uh, some exploring stuff like show, which will show the contents of images uh, with the state. and. Uh, uh, quite useful thing called check. If you are not sure that uh, the kernel support is uh, up to date, you can run Creo check. It will tell you what's missing in the kernel. Uh, and the second uh, way to use Creo is uh, using RPC. It's not yet in 0 0.7. It's scheduled for 0 0.8 or, or 1.0 if it will be stable enough at that point. Uh, it basically inc uh, includes Creo service, which listens on the Unix socket and accepts uh, requests encoded uh, using Google protocol buffers uh, format. Uh, using one, uh, currently programs can uh, request to dump uh, themselves, for example. Uh, and things protocol, uh, protobuf bindings exist for a variety of languages. Uh, we are not limited with C only, so we can use it with uh, Python, Java, and so on. I have a demo. I'll try to show it to you. Mm -hmm. So, whoops. Let's try it one more time. You want a mirror app? I tried the same as, wait a second, there should be, yeah, that's it. Now, yes. like this. Yes. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. So, slightly cut off, you might need to. Uh, that's okay. So, uh, this terminal runs inside the KVM virtual machine, which is on my laptop. Uh, I'll start a VNC server and from my laptop connect to it with the VNC viewer. Uh, so what I did is created a TCP connection from my laptop into a virtual machine. Uh, I start a next screen server with a Pacman and what I do next is go into this virtual machine, remove all the images and you can see there is a TCP connection, uh, as I told, from inside the KVM guest uh, to my laptop. Here is the VNC server plus uh, window manager, Xterm, bash, and the screen server itself. So let's, let's try to dump this guy. So uh, also I use a lot of short options that are long for each of them. What I say here is that I want to 
dump process starting from p9557, put images into directory D, write log file uh, into a dump.log with increased verbosity, and uh, the TCP established key is required because uh, TCP connection uh, should be handled separately, and the user have to say explicitly for crew that it's aware of changes that can be done in the system to uh, make it running. So here it is. Processes were dumped and they disappeared. The connection is not here, but the client sees that it just stuck because the connection is blocked with the net filter. Now we can try to, uh, sorry, to restore them, right? Let's check, the connection is back here. Uh, the prods are back here, and the most interesting thing, yep, yeah, it's up and running again, so everything was restored. Uh, the, what is produced by Cree is a bunch of files, uh, each one containing some information about uh, process. They are all encoded in protocol buffers format. Uh, to explore them, uh, you can use the show comment, for example, the D8. Hmm. What's wrong with that? Sir? Oh, yeah, sir. Forgot myself. Uh, <laughs> you can explore the images with the show command. Uh, here is the tree of process. We uh, dump all the information about them. Uh, registers, com, uh, VMAs, uh, all the files that they keep open, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, uh, Creo lives on the creo.org site. Uh, there is some amount of documentation, a uh, description of, uh, of the format, uh, a page describing uh, API, both CLI and RPC and other stuff. Uh, sources sit in Git. Uh, in the main branch, we have the Google Plus page where we publish news about the project. Uh, to follow up with the discussion, uh, you can also subscribe uh, to the mailing list. And in the below is my email. I currently maintain the project, so you can also ask questions to me. Which one? Uh, uh, explain. So the title was. Turn it on. The title was Creo and LXC. Explain how Creo works with containers, LXC, OpenBZ, and everything. Oh, so I have one, yeah. Uh, so the question, uh, not the question, but the proposal was to describe how Creo works with LXC. Uh, Creo currently supports namespaces, uh, which means uh, when you provide the PID of a process tree you want to dump, it will check uh, whether this process live in, a na in, in any set of namespaces and we'll start dumping them as well. Uh, so since both LXC and uh, OpenVZ, VZ control uh, create a plain set of namespaces for a container, uh, crew can be used to dump and of course restore containers. Uh, we have already integrated uh, crew into OpenVZ, so you can just uh, take uh, OpenVZ kernel tools, VZ control, uh, and uh, dump and restore containers with a higher level uh, command line tools than Creo is. You've seen that there are lots of options you have to pass to make it working. Uh, with VZ control, it will be uh, as simple as just VZ control dump and the container ID. Sorry? Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, the similar thing can be done with LXC. Uh, what uh, LXC should do is uh, start Creo providing it uh, with the PID of a uh, root process, as it's seen from the initial PID namespace, and providing it with a directory where to put images into. Uh, after, after dump, uh, LXC should uh, 
not after them, but before restore. Uh, LXC should make sure that the uh, file system state is the same as it was after dump because uh, Crew cares only about the process state and everything related to that. Uh, any external state, uh, such as file system and, uh, uh, for example, networking configuration on the host side, all this stuff should be uh, pre-configured and uh, uh, prepared by, by the caller. VZ control does that. Uh, it's up to LXC to do the same. Uh, If container lives in its own mount namespace, Crew yeah. will take this uh, namespace mounts into the images. But if your container lives in the same mount namespace as the host does, then yes, you should prepare mounts right. in advance. Yeah, my, my, my understanding of uh, what you just said is that we need to make sure that the container root file system is perfectly in the same place on disk as it was when you took the snapshot, but everything else from there should be covered by Cryo. Very safe state, very safe files. Right. Yeah. Okay. You said it will. If it was in its own namespace, it will restore the, it will restore the, the namespace. You just need to make sure that the root file system and all files that were opened by that container on the host are the same place and are identical. Right. Yeah. Okay. So nice curveball question. What stops you using VZCTL dump on a LXC container? Uh, basically, with VZCTL, we we support both in kernel checkpointing that we traditionally have, and we support Crew for 3.x kernel. Uh, and uh, in case we see 3.x kernel, we, we just uh, call a couple of shell scripts, uh, VZCPT, VZRST, and they call Crew. And uh, yeah, besides that, we of course we, we do all the job because it's it's the same as for the checkpointing that we had before, and by just utilizing these two small shell scripts, we have all the functionality in place. Like for example, we already have migration capability that takes care about file system migration to the different box. So migration is just another shell script which calls VZCTL and, and our sync. Uh, and that's basically it. I mean, it was quite a short patch to add the support for Crew. But Visit the question was actually, I was getting out, was deeper than that. Uh, v, uh, OpenVZ container is slightly different from an LXC container, but is it possible to actually use VZCTL to dump an LXC container, or do the differences actually prevent that? You so mean if the container is to be created by LXC tools? Uh, yeah, I actually haven't tried that, but. Give Perhaps. me a theoretical guess. Would it be possible? I, I guess yes, it would be. We yes. have tried it manually, actually. We created a container with Elixir and dumped. I, I'd better try that, but it looks like it's, it's, to, it's the same container, basically. So, so you mentioned that there's like the container created by the Q and uh, the, the Elixir is different. Can you give some examples like how they're different? So I can try to answer that. Uh, they're, they're actually extremely similar. Uh, the biggest difference, I think, is that well, they're not on the same place on the file system. Um, we don't use the same config file either. Uh, but besides that, we use, I guess, OpenVZ on an unpatched kernel will use the same features as LXC does. The, the main difference is right. they're not on the same place. The config is different. But for Crayo, it doesn't matter. It should, that's why it yep. should just work. So basically, what he's now said is that we can do it today. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, we'll take a five minute